So, hello, uh, I'm Jeff Arnold. Um, so, formerly of uh, Insight Data Science as a data science fellow, uh, and will be working at Instacart uh, beginning of January as a data scientist. Uh, so, I should get used to saying things like, uh, my opinions do not necessarily represent the opinions of anyone who has or ever will employ me. Uh, probably don't represent the opinions of myself in the past or the future. Uh, so, um, this is a bit of a clickbaity title, uh, I realize after the fact. Um, if you're parsing it as solving R for data science, um, I'm not going to do that. Uh, most of the people here are doing that far better than I. Uh, so I will give you time to leave if you're expecting me to solve uh, R for all of data science. Uh, instead, I am solving R for data science, as in, R for data science, which needs no introduction, uh, by Wickham and Grohlman. Um, and I made exercise solutions to it. And that's what I'm going to be discussing. Uh, so hopefully that's not too much of a letdown. Um, so as one would expect, these are a set of exercise solutions to all exercises in uh, R for data science. It is up on GitHub, as uh, one is wont to do. And it is all in, uh, done with Bookdown and compiled to a nice, pretty website. But why did I write these solutions? Um, what was I thinking at the time? Um, and I had to go back to kind of reflect upon it. Um, but the main thing was this was from my previous life as an academic. So I was uh, using R for Data Science in a course. Um, I was responsible for teaching kind of the first year sequence of quantitative methods to social science PhD students. Uh, at least with the students I had, um, I really couldn't assume any sort of prior statistical experience, uh, nor any prior programming experience. And they were interested in getting to do applied research, not in uh, the theory behind it necessarily, except to the extent that it uh, moves that forward, which is actually kind of perfect, because really like this book in the sense that it's not a book about R as a programming language per se, nor is it a, bo a book about statistics that happens to use R on the side. Um, it really starts with getting uh, people into using R uh, to get their job done. And you know, at least when I took quantitative methods courses, it was a lot of this. Um, I know a lot of people here are, are improving uh, that curricula. Um, and so I don't expect this to be the case much longer. But um, you know, in practice, and you know, uh, most applied research is a lot more like this. Um, you know, there's the importing, the tidying, the transforming, the visualizing, the modeling. And of that modeling, the like, proofs behind why all that statistical inference works is a very small sliver of it. A very important sliver, one that we cannot ignore, but um, you have to go through a lot of stuff just to get there. And that's why I adopted this textbook, and it was great. Um, you know, now I could spend more time working with the students and less time writing more and more uh, of the same material. Uh, but, you know, it was a new book, so I was like, well, uh, I should probably see what's in it if I'm going to uh, assign it. And so I just kind of sat down and worked through it. Uh, I knew Tidyverse, uh, so it was, it was fun. Um, and then, you know, put it up on GitHub. Uh, and I didn't want to make it too obvious that it was R for data science. And so, you know, I took the ROT 13 of it um, and called it E4QF. Uh, I clearly not too good with uh, the cryptography, so there's these things called search, and apparently people found it. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so that's really how I got there. And so all this happened about like the month before, actually, I think R for Data Science was even published. Um, I think I signed it prior to the official publication date. Did that, put it up there, um, you know, told my students they could look at it, it was great. Um, they clearly didn't catch enough typos, um, as I found out later. Uh, and then it just kind of sat around there until eventually 
people started finding it. Um, so what did I learn from this experience? Um, well, I mean, I would like to be able to say that like, you know, the experience of being a beginner and working through and learning it, um, I don't want to say I suffer from expert bias in this because I'm not really an expert, but um, I didn't get that part of it. Um, you know, so if one is wondering, this is the thread where the, the closure name came from. So I had a bit of experience with Tidyverse. Um, it was mostly, but I learned a lot through those books. But I found most of the stuff in practice I ended up learning from all of it is one, you know, if you put stuff on GitHub and make it public, some people might find it useful. And um, that's really what happened here. Um, second, I make lots of typos. Um, so I spent a lot of time, kind of technical fixes to that, because um, kind of didn't want to go back and proofread everything. Um, and uh, I've been using this kind of as an opportunity to learn new things. So when you know, new uh, markdown stuff comes up, I try it out. If I want to learn some more JavaScript or some other sort of new technology, I test it out here. So first thing to do, like I go, uh, end up building up a lot of uh, automation in terms of deployment of this. You know, it uses Bookdown to build it. Uh, Travis uh, commits it and deploys it to GitHub pages, but then I go through a lot of different things of check the spelling using our open size spelling package, linter, styler, and then a lot of extra stuff like I lint the markdown, I check the HTML, I check for all the broken links. Um, this can be kind of quite useful. Uh, here's one that came up yesterday or so. Uh, the HTML linter found that the ID of um, something generated by HTML widgets was a duplicate. So there would have been a double image in there that I would have never found. And uh, I picked it up and you know, removed the caching and fixed it after uh, a bit of annoyance, but this is something that I uh, picked up. Uh, so been building up that over time, same sort of thing. After it's built, check all the links, uh, all uh, 16,000 of them to make sure that they're still working. This picks up things like, you know, spelling exercises wrong or whatnot. Uh, a, a second thing I like to do is trying to like reduce friction and getting user feedback. So, um, you know, it's been helpful, as I said, put it up, people found it, and I just kind of responded as people brought up things. So this is one of my favorite ones. Um, the question is, uh, brainstorm as many ways as possible to select depth time, depth delay, R time, and R array from flight. So a bunch of different ways to do the select command. I was all clever. Um, I mentioned the numbers, and then I say things like, this is bad, it's obfuscated, what do these, uh, columns mean, I don't know what column six is, uh, I just wrote the code and I've already forgotten. Um, sure enough, uh, I get a issue raised that I actually wrote in the wrong column um, after writing that, and it was not on purpose, um, I'm not that clever, uh, but uh, people catch that sort of stuff, and I think that's great. Um, and you know, had some people contribute in various ways, uh, I would like, I love more contributions. Um, and, but one thing with GitHub issues is just kind of how time consuming they are. So these are a br bunch from Greg Wilson, which are literally things like uh, the, and a whole bunch of just minor typos. Uh, as I said, I make lots of typos. Um, opening up a GitHub issue for all of those is kind of annoying. Uh, so I also tried putting on the service uh, Hypothesis which allows annotation of websites. So that's pretty nice in that it's a lot easier just to highlight something and leave a comment and say this is misspelled, this is a typo, um, rather than opening up a GitHub issue. You know, some places you do want that extra friction uh, for feedback. I think it, with these sort of things, you want less friction. Uh, but then I started thinking another way to go forward with it is simply to write something where you can just highlight the text and then it will open up a new GitHub issue that has that highlighted text as the body of uh, the issue and you know, links to the page where that's occurring. So in something like a document that makes things a lot easier to submit these sort of kind of minor trivial, there's a typo here type issues. 
Um, another thing I started uh, looking at here was what could I learn from user behavior? Uh, so you know, there's Google Analytics on it uh, as of November when I started playing around with it. And so kind of thought I'd uh, throw that information in and see what are the page views of people um, on these various, uh, the various uh, chapters of R for data science uh, solutions. So the top are the highest chapters going from like the first couple intros and you see data visualization has lots of page views, then transformations have a little less and it kind of decreases rapidly as one would uh, expect in that sort of behavior. Uh, but can we maybe say something about which ones seem to be harder or which, uh, people are, which ones people are turning to? And one problem with that is the number of exercises in R for data science vary dramatically with each chapter. Okay, so data visualization, transformation also have a lot of exercises. Uh, strings has a ton of exercises. Uh, but let's go ahead and put together a simple statistical model. I'll model uh, use, unique users viewing the page as a function of chapter and exercises, and then look for uh, pages that are, are not explained well by it as being potentially very hard or very easy or uh, ones that people want to view otherwise. And we see that like exploratory data analysis, uh, the third major chapter seems to be receiving fewer page uh, users than expected. People seem to tail off at the end. Um, but iteration and the beginning of the modeling chapters seem to get lots of users, uh, even given how far into the book they are and the number of uh, exercises they have. Um, so with that, I uh, kind of want to know, you know, what's next with this? Uh, and basically, I really only had one goal here, uh, just saying that, like, uh, this solutions exist, they're up on GitHub, uh, they're there for people to contribute. Um, I'm not trying to keep this uh, my own. I'd love everyone to, uh, if you see something wrong, if you see ways it can be improved, uh, contribute, edit, I'd love to open this up as much as possible. Uh, those are the links to it, and uh, that's my information. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a few minutes for questions, and we have a few mics. We have the throwable mics like we had in the opening keynote. Okay. Got one over here. Hello, does this work? Um, hey, Jeff. Um, Hi. I was. I really appreciated the infrastructure that you put together around like testing the HTML mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. Like, I'd really like to implement that with some things that I've done. Have you written anywhere about like a, a way to do that? Or a guide or something? Um, I have not written a guide to do that. And it's kind of, a lot of this has just evolved as I've tried things out. Um, uh, you can check out the source code of it. Um, one thing I've tended to use, at least for the HTML and Markdown, has been actually to turn to uh, Node and JavaScript packages, just because there's so much web infrastructure there, it seemed to be easier to implement. Uh, but um, uh, but that's about all I have there. But I, um, I'll think about writing up more on that. So which book are you doing next? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> the one thing I didn't get to, which I would love to ask Hadley at some point, um, was uh, what is the deal with the nursery rhymes? Um, I know it started with, uh, you know, Little Bunny Fufu, uh, but then there's like multiple exercises uh, in R for data science about implementing uh, nursery rhymes and other songs. Um, in my memory, it was like pages of these. Uh, in reality, was, there's only three questions. Uh, but um, I didn't, I should, since I had time, I should have put it in there, but um, 
for what it's worth, uh, the Baby Shark song seems to be one that would fall under that rubric very well. I, uh, if they th threw this back up, I have a very nice version that uses map in there. You can like turn nested for loops into uh, uh, multiple intervals. Um, so that might be the next song to uh, become uh, an R programming uh, teaching tool. <laughs>